I vote to take uh, questions 51, 57, 64, 70 and 83 together in the names of Deputy Connolly, Barrett, Ryan, Ryan and Smith. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier in reply to previous questions, the pay of uh, PDF, similar to other areas within the public service, was reduced during the financial crisis. The reductions in pay were on a graduated scale, with higher percentages being deducted from those on higher earnings. This action was one of the measures necessary to be taken to stabilise the financial situation which faced the country at the beginning of this decade. The Government appreciates the contribution made by all public servants, including members of the PDF during the economic crisis, under the public service pay agreements. Pay has been restored to public servants, including members of uh, the PDF uh, Defence Forces. Uh, um, successful negotiations with the PDF uh, representative associations have provided for pay increases under the Lansdowne Road Agreement. These pay increases were weighed in favour of the lower paid. PD4 has signed up to the Lansdowne Road Agreement, LRA Agreement, in March 2017. The finalisation of the negotiations under the agreement allowed for the commencement of the process for the implementation of pay increases and arrears, which have now been applied to the PDF. In addition, improved pay scales for general service recruits and privates who joined the PDF um, force post the 1st of January 2013 were backdated to the 1st of July 2016 and paid in August 2017. Gross annual earnings for this cohort is 27,000, inclusive of military service allowance. This is a significant uh, increase in pay, which was approximately 21,800 per annum prior to this agreement. Family income supplement uh, provides a means uh, to supplement a family's income, uh, be they employed in the public service or private sector, having regard to combined family income and the number of dependent children, pay levels in the public service, including the Defence Forces, are determined on an individual basis and are not weighed in accordance with family uh, circumstances. Um, going forward, there is potential for further increases arising from the recent negotiations of the extension of the Lansdowne Road Agreement. The Public Service Stability Agreement 2018-2020 contains proposals for increases in pay ranging from 6.2% to 7.4% over the lifetime of the agreement. The proposals have been presented for consideration to the PDF uh, representative associations who participated in the negotiation process. They are subject to ballot by members of the, uh, the associations. Uh, the agreement will bring uh, undoubted benefits to members of uh, the PDF, and I would encourage members of uh, the Permanent Defence Force to ballot for acceptance so that they may start to feel the benefits of increases in pay in arising uh, from the agreement in early 2018. The Minister, my question was, what steps are you taking to reduce the number of persons in the Defence Forces who are receiving family income supplement? And if you as a Minister tell me that you're happy that our army is dependent on family income supplement, we're in serious trouble. Now, you've repeatedly acknowledged previous questions that you're committed to increasing the expenditure on defence. You've, committed, you've acknowledged that there's an actual crisis and that more people are leaving the services then are going in, and I understand approximately 580 leave every year. Now, surely, when I ask a question what steps you're going to take, in addition to telling us what has been agreed with various um, unions or representative bodies, you might look at what additional steps are needed by a government that would recognise a crisis and that seems to have any amount of money to spend on a European basis, but not money to spend on basic salary to change and to lift basic conditions so that 580 people aren't exiting every year. Thanks. Uh, first of all, Deputy, I would like to remind you that there's less than 117 people in receipt of family income supplement in the Defence Forces out of a total of 9,219 or 920, or whatever it is, the whole time equivalent at, at this moment in time. So to say that there's a large number of people or a high percentage of people in the Permanent Defence Forces in receipt of family income supplement is totally uh, untrue. Totally untrue. There is left less than 117 uh, members, and that is uh, information that is in the public uh, domain uh, at this uh, moment in time. You, you state there about the large number of people uh, that are leaving. Yes, uh, and it's, uh, it's above uh, the average that it has been over the last number of years. In the Department of Defence Forces, there are always a high uh, turnover. That is nothing new. 
in uh, the Defence Forces. But there is a budget there uh, for uh, personnel of 9,500 uh, personnel. I spelled out to you the increases uh, that we have put in place. I'm not sure if you were listening that we, we went through a recession uh, from 2011 to 2016. I'm not sure of that. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, in this side of the House, uh, we have uh, uh, to mind uh, the, 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 the pounds, shilling, uh, shillings and pence here. So I think we have uh, to act in a prudent way uh, uh, as well. I, I, Mr. Minister, there's one thing I do is to listen very carefully, and my question was in relation to family income supplement and other welfare supports. I think it's an absolute scandal that members of our army have to resort to family income supplement and other welfare supports at a time where there's no shortage of money to commit to the militarisation of Europe. Now, I don't think that people stood outside the door last week in the coldest of weathers just for the fun of it. They stood outside to tell us how difficult it was to survive on the type of money that they're getting. Now, my question is, can you stand over that as minister? Can you stand over the fact that they're on such minimum pay that they, and, and, and actually your answer refers to customers because I asked, which is very unacceptable, that there are 117 customers. They're households. They're families, they're people, they're not customers on family income supplement. I didn't, I didn't, use, I didn't use the word sorry, customers. The, no, you didn't, sorry, but that's the reply I got when I asked the word customer is used in relation to, uh, the, I asked that question. Sorry, it's, that's, the, that's what's used in the reply to the doll question. So my question again is, what steps are you taking other than what you've outlined, which are just part, thank you, Les uh, Corla. Well, first of all, uh, Deputy, I outlined to you the, the pay increases that, uh, that, that, uh, that have had all elements of the public service were subjected to pay cuts during the financial crisis. Uh, on completion of recruit and three-star training, newly qualified three-star pri privates and their naval service equivalent uh, can expect minimum gross uh, annual earnings of €27,000. Up, uh, approximately 21, up from uh, 21,800 uh, uh, last year. Uh, a newly qualified non-graduate entry second lieutenant uh, can expect a minimum of 34,915 per annum after 15 months training, while a graduate en entry of lieutenant uh, can expect a minimum of 39,860 per annum after 15 months training. The first a uh, point on the pay scale for a corporal, including military service allowance, is €37,000. The first point on the pay scale for a sergeant, including military service allowance, is €39,600. Uh, and in conclusion, uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the thing of a supplementary or the family income supplement, you actually, if you put down a, a parliamentary question and ask, what other people in, 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 in various jobs are in? in there's less than 117, 117 uh, families in, in, in receipt of family income supplement in the Defence Forces.